What is up, everybody? Matt Klaskowski here. Photoshop Throwback Thursday, episode one. Yes, episode number one. Can't guarantee there's going to be two, but it's highly likely that there will be. Um, so, uh, so here's the idea behind this, guys. Is it, a lot of it's just for fun. If you if you're following this, a lot of times, you know, I've done mostly photography for really for the last ten to fifteen years. These are effects that got me into Photoshop. And they got a lot of people I knew back back at that time into Photoshop. Uh, there's a lot of graphic design, a lot of effects. And, uh, and so if you just wanna have a little bit of fun, if you like Photoshop, maybe you wanna learn about some of the features that you don't get to use all the time for photo editing, that's really what this is about. Just to have a little bit of fun, bring back some old effects that you know people used to just wow about at the time. I had to do this one first. The, if I thought of a throwback effect, it was the aqua button. Back in the days where the, the Mac OS had all those aqua buttons in it, um, so popular at the time. It got like a standing ovation. This was back in like 1998, but it really did get a standing ovation at one point. So uh, so let's go ahead and dive in here. You can see our, our what our end result's gonna look like. We are going to create a new document here. It doesn't really matter what size. Um, we are also gonna make this in a way that it, it's infinitely scalable too, you'll see in a second here. So first thing that we wanna do, if you can imagine, I'm gonna make a, we need to make a rounded rectangle. And if you can imagine, at one point in Photoshop, the way we used to make a rectangle, we a rounded rectangle, we'd make like a, a we'd make a, a rectangle with a selection tool, and then you would take the elliptical marquee tool, hold down the shift key, start drawing out a circle, and then you can use your space bar to move it in. But when you hold down the shift key, you're in add mode. If you look at my cursor, so what we used to do is we used to like build shapes like a rounded rectangle, like that. And then I do the same thing over on the other side and I'd add another shape to it. Uh, not very exact, there, there were ways to do it, but thankfully there's a much better way to do this now. That is with the rounded rectangle tool. So here's what's cool about the about this tool tool, and especially in a couple of updates, you know, recently, is we'll go ahead and uh, and we'll drag out a shape here, okay? Um, as soon as we do that, it's going to open up the properties panel, and with that link icon on, we can actually change live on screen. We can change how this shape looks just by you know just scrubby dragging on these corners here. So. We'll go ahead here, I'll make a nice little pill button. That was the uh, that was the popular way to do it. Uh, nice part about this is I can make this document as large as I want. This is a vector shape, meaning I could I could take this and blow it up to a poster size and, and you'd never notice any quality loss in it. All right, so uh, I got my little pill button going on here. Now, most of this is built with a layer style. So we're gonna go over to our layers panel. I'm gonna double click just in the gray area over here. Uh, double click, it's going to open up the layer style dialog box and just bring it over here. So the first thing we want to do is add a gradient overlay to it. All right, so we're going to click on gradient overlay. I'm going to click on the gradient picker itself. And now what I want to do is I want to create a gradient that's going to be basically two different shades of blue. So the first shade of blue here, let's click on our little color stop. And what I can tell you is that I've kind of kind of gone in here and done a couple of colors. So it, it, what's funny about this is I actually had a tutorial file from, it must have been 15 years ago, buried on a drive somewhere that had one of these buttons on it. So, uh, so one of the colors is uh, the first aqua color, we'll do three. Just come down here and you can just do your uh, hexa, whatever color it's called down here. So you can, of course, you know, drag over to an aqua-ish color. I can tell you a good one is 3CC9 um, D2, and, uh, and that'll give you a nice little aqua color to start off with there. And then we're gonna click over on this right stop and double click on it. It opens up the same color uh, picker again. And then another color is 1161 C2. 1161C2, there we go. Now you get a nice blue color, click OK. So what this is doing is this is applying, you can actually see, um, let's go ahead and click OK and I'll move this out of the way. You can see a preview of it, it goes from that, that blue to that aqua blue color there. 
All right, so we're, uh, we're, we're, we're right along the way. Next thing we did need to do is apply an inner glow, not an inner shadow, an inner glow. So we're gonna click on there, blend mode set to normal, uh, opacity set to about 50%. Uh, click on your color swatch here and we're just gonna add a blue color to that. So uh, you can see the color here, uh, 003298 is a good one. Anything that's in that, that bluish range over here, you can see this doesn't have to be exact. Um, anything in that, that kind of you know, medium darkish blue color. Click OK. And then the settings that you would change for this, we can kind of tuck this off to the side. It's an inner glow. So if you think about it, it's going to be applied on the inside. So what we want to do is kind of go over here and mess with either the size. So I can make it smaller or larger. And I want a large size here. This is a big image. If you're using smaller pixel sized images, you're probably going to use a smaller size setting. So that's one of the ones that's going to change based on uh, based on the size of the image that you're working on here. But what I'm looking for is it, it to encroach quite a bit in there. It gives it a lot of depth on the edges there. Okay. Now the next thing that we want to go in here and add is an outer glow. In the outer glow, we're just going to pick a uh, a similar color blue that we used that aqua color blue that we used for the uh, the pill button there. Again, normal, fifty percent, and then the spread and the size. Best thing I can tell you here is, you know, the size, it's going to, you know, how much does it glow out beyond that? We don't really want a big glow to this there. So I keep that size down uh, pretty low just so it gives a little bit of depth on that side, but you don't need a lot of it. Okay. It's almost like it's casting the light on whatever is around it. Okay. So at this point, we have got our, uh, we have got the makings of our button. So the next thing we need to do is you need to bring it to life a little bit. And we do that with a highlight. You know, it was, it was so fun. You could add a highlight to anything. And it's like, ooh, wow, look at that. Um, so you kind of add a highlight. It's almost shininess. It makes it shiny. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we'll take this layer. We're going to press Command or Control J, which makes a copy of it. All right. So I got my original one down here. In fact, we'll call this button. And then we'll go to the top layer here and we'll call this shiny, shiny happy button. Let's double click on the little FX icon over here on the right hand side. It's gonna open up that layer style dialog box. We're gonna turn off inner glow. We're gonna turn off outer glow. And we're just gonna go back over here to the gradient. So instead of this blue aqua to blue gradient, we are gonna double click on this first one and we're gonna make it white and we're gonna double click on the second one and we're gonna make it white. Click okay. Doesn't look too great, right? So it's basically just gonna have white over our, our image here. That's not what we're looking for. So we are gonna click, this is the color stop down here. Up here, that little square lets us control the opacity. So I can bring the opacity of that first color stop down to 0%. So what's going on here? It is now doing white to transparent. Now it looks like white to black. Why does it look like white to black? Because the button that's below it is black. So that's why it looks like it's going from white to black, even though it's really going from white to transparent. And what's behind the transparency is black. And that's why we're seeing black there. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. And we're going to click OK on our layer style dialog here. Now. A little trick with layer styles. You have opacity. If I reduce the opacity of, and, and I'm going to hide the highlight set for a second because it'll it'll look a little bit better on here. If I reduce the opacity of this layer, it'll eventually fade it until nothing. Okay. Think about what it what this layer is composed of. It is composed of a black shape and layer styles. Well, if I go to fill opacity. What it does is fill hides the opacity of whatever's on the layer here, which is going to be this black shape. Now it keeps the layer style, which is why we're not really seeing any difference here, right? Look, I can change it between zero and 100. You don't see anything. And that's because the fill is that black shape, but all of these things are over the top of it. So now let's go back up to our little shiny layer. Well, now, we can see if I go to fill, I have transparency here. 
So what happens when I go to fill and I bring that down? It hid the black from that shape. And now it's just keeping the layer effect, which is the gradient. And that gradient is what went from white to transparent. So opacity would have gotten rid of everything. Opacity would have gotten rid of the, the highlight, the shininess too. But fill opacity lets us just drop out the black on the layer and it just keeps the highlight. Okay, we're getting close, I promise. Next thing that we wanna do here is we want to change the shape of this. We'll just go to edit down here to free transform. And we're gonna smush it up. And then we're gonna hold our option or alt key and smush it in like so. And hit my uh, down arrow key and nudge it down a little bit just to offset it off of the side of the pill there. And maybe we can bring that out just a hair like so. Now, here's, a, uh, here's the trick to this. Hit enter or return. And what I want to do is I want to bring the, just the bottom of this up. Since this is a shape, I can click. I can take my direct selection tool. It's a tool you probably don't use much as a photographer. But since this is a shape and it's a path and it's built by these little points here, I can take my direct selection tool, right? And it gets a little funky sometimes. I'm just gonna click on that layer here. If I click on the shape, it enables all these points and I'm gonna just click on the one point I wanna move and drag that up like so. Go ahead, just choose yes and drag that up as well, like so. So now it's nice and flat. And I might even drag these sides out a little bit too. Let's contour it to our shape of our button a little bit there. There we go. Nice and shiny. Looks good. Enter or return. Now we have a shiny, shiny shape on there. I can bring the opacity down a little bit if you need to. Maybe use the uh, arrow keys. I can nudge it around. But take a look. That's without the shininess and that's with the shininess. So now we have our shiny little button here. And the last thing that we would want to do would be Go in here and add some text, press the type tool, and I'll just type in liquid aqua. Let's go with aqua, aqua. There we go. Commander control T for free transform. I'll bring it over our little shape over here. That looks good. And since we've gone this far, we might as well do, do this the way that we used to do it. Just you didn't, you didn't just throw text on top of the button. Um, you kind of set it into the button a little bit. So what we can do is double click on that layer, brings open that layer style dialog. We're gonna go to bevel and emboss, and the normal is gonna be an outer bevel. What the outer bevel does is if you look, it almost makes it look like it's, it's lifting off of, the, uh, off of the shape. So I don't want that. I want it to be set into the shape. So if I go and I change this to pillow and boss, it actually starts to look like it's set into the shape here. And then we'll click OK, maybe reduce that opacity a little bit so it brings in a little bit of the color. You can see a nice little highlight around there, nice little shadow. You can see the edges. Folks, that is the aqua button. <laughs> I swear, this was like it got a standing ovation back in the day. If you went to websites, this is before WordPress. If you went to websites, there was, you know, you'd see all the menus. It was home and shop and buy and all the, and they were all done with these, these little aqua buttons everywhere. And people did different colors and um, it just, it was crazy. So uh, so there you have it. When when I think Photoshop throwback Thursday and uh, and I wanted to start this little series here. That was that was one of the first ones that came to mind for me because one of the first things you know I remember that that seeing people get really wowed out out there. But I got lots of other uh, little ones for you as the weeks come on here. So thanks so much to, uh, for watching here. If you want to find out more about me, my website, see some of my photography tutorials, which is really what I do more. Uh, you can go check out my website over at mattk.com.